short but informative. I think it's important we're having this meeting today. And uh, I guess, uh, Councillor Olson, with your permission, uh, we'll start off with introductions. Are you ready? Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. I'll just let you uh, take it over for here on introductions. Thank you. So I'm Michael Torres, Program Manager at Clark County Community Services. Sam, would you like to go next? Hi, Samantha Whitley, also with uh, Community Services. Cherish DeRocher, City of Battleground. Uh, Tracy Coleman, how about you next? Tracy Coleman, City of Woodland. Thank you. Uh, Dave Scott. Good morning, Dave Scott, City of West Eagle. Good morning, Dave. Uh, Emily. Emily Lutz, City of Battleground. Thank you, Emily. Jeff Swanson. Good morning, Jeff Swanson with the City of La Center. Thank you, Jeff. And Councillor Olson. Yep, good morning, um, Councillor Olson, District 2, uh, Clark County. And uh, Melita. Melita Mosley, Town of Yakult. Thank you, Melita. And finally, Rebecca. Good morning, Rebecca Royce, Clark County Community Services. Is there anyone uh, who has dialed in or is online that I have not uh, identified or called out to identify themselves, please? Okay, well, thank you everyone. And I think, uh, go ahead, Councilor Olson. Uh, next, we have the mini approval minutes. Yep. Uh, are there any changes or additions to the March 8th meeting minutes? Okay, if there are no changes or updates, um, I would accept a motion for approval of the March 8th, 2021 meeting minutes. Jeff Swanson moved to approve. Dave Scott, second. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are passed. All right, item three, uh, American Rescue Plan home funding. Michael, I'll let you take this or assign it to someone else. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll take it and Sam might fill in if, if there are any questions or if she feels that we need to add anything else. But uh, with the American Rescue Plan of uh, 2021, there is some additional home funding that is going to be coming to Clark County. The allocations were released uh, April 8th, and our allocation was uh, $2,006,728. Um, there is some defined eligibility for who can use the funds. So they must benefit people who are uh, or are or at are at risk of experiencing homelessness, people who are fleeing or attempting to flee domestic violence, stalking, or human trafficking, and populations for whom supportive services would prevent homelessness or housing instability, or households with a veteran family member that meets one of the above criteria. Um, there are um, uh, statutory bill uh, requirements uh, the bill waives statutory requirements, including a commitment deadline, uh, match requirements, and the set aside for the community housing development organizations or CHOTOs. And up to 15% of the funds can be used to cover administrative costs, which is a little bit higher than the usual home of 10%. And there, we have been notified that there will be additional HUD guidance coming this summer and that the funds must be spent out by 2030. So we actually have a good amount of time uh, to receive the guidance, understand uh, what we need to do to use these funds within the intent of HUD and, you know, and be in compliance and allocate them and spend them out. Uh, Sam, is there anything that you would add? Um, well, I We'd like the board to let us know what they would like us to do, but um, what we were tentatively planning is um, putting all of them or some of them just into our RFP process in the fall um, and then just targeting it towards the homeless activities. Any feedback from the board on that? We've got, sounds like we have a lot of time though to spend this particular amount of money. Would you wanna put it all in in one year or what are your thoughts there? 
Well, two mil, but personally, this is you know, Michael about 2 million dollars sounds like a lot. Um, it isn't necessarily a lot. When we start talking about uh, amount of funding that is needed for rental assistance or amount of funding that's needed for. You know, uh, purchasing a home uh, or homes uh, for uh, for a program. Um, that's this. I think we're really listing this more as an info item for the urban county policy board right now and just letting you know that our default. Would be as we would with any. Funding coming into the program to use our. Uh, procurement funding allocation process that we have established, which is the request for allocate uh, for applications that we do and and we do it in the fall. That's our default and and that's what we would do. I would probably put it all in uh, in the initial request for applications. And if we do not receive enough, uh, you know, applications, we would roll it over to the next year as necessary. Um, nothing stops the urban county policy board from uh, pursuing a different avenue for these funds. Um, I think that you know, the Clark County Council would probably want some kind of coordination and information if we did a, a different process um, than what we would to allocate these specific funds. But um, I think as we find out more guidance from HUD, over the summer, we will really be able to define more, not only um, how we use these funds and what we use them for, but what process we would need to uh, use to expend them. Thanks, Michael. Any questions um, from the board for Michael or Samantha on this item? Thank you. And one one takeaway again, this is this is uh, info at this point instead of an action, but one takeaway, and I think what where Sam was uh, going with that um, is we are open to, you know, if the urban county policy board has, uh, um, you know, some some ideas that you would like to do something different than the request for applications, please email uh, Samantha email myself, uh, you know, let's discuss it. And, and as staff, we will be happy to bring alternatives to the urban county policy board to this, you know, to propose and, and have a discussion. So that as staff, you know, we will follow your guidance ultimately on this. Anything else, Sam? I don't think so. Thanks. Thank, you. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. And next slide, please. And this is the next agenda item, Councillor Olson. You want us to move forward? Yeah, unless there are any questions, yeah, go ahead. Sam, would you like to take a uh, take this one? This is a our update on the 2021 entitlement funding uh, and the submission of our action plan. Just so that Urban County Policy Board knows what we're talking about in terms of the agenda item. Yes, thank you. So um, we had our council hearing, a public hearing last week uh, for the 2021 action plan. And we are submitting it to HUD this week at the end of the week. And I wanted to let you know um, some adjustments that we made um, after your awards meeting in March. So um, we awarded at, in March, we awarded $221,414 um, to Mercy Corps on their business IDA program. Um, they had requested $290,000, but we just ran out of CDBG money and they were the last one on the list for funding. So. Um, after we made that um, funding allocation, I learned from our accountant that we hadn't included um, 25,000 in anticipated program income. So we um, included all of the program income we've received to date, but we usually know throughout the year we're going to get additional program income. And since we're um, having some trouble spending down our CDBG funds, we thought it would be best to award any um, the anticipated program income also, which is about 25,000. But I asked her, can we just round it up to 250 instead of making it 247, 414? And she said, yes, we would have enough um, to give them a rounded off award of 250,000 in CDBG funds. So that is the first adjustment. If nobody has any questions, there was one other adjustment that we had to make. 
Um, this slide is showing, and this was completely 100% hey, my yes. Uh, go, go, uh, be, just before, they, if, if uh, Port Irwin County Policy Board, two things. Um, we didn't need to bring this to the Urban County Policy Board, um, you know, after the March meeting, just because by our policies, this amount of funding for that project is within the range that as staff, we do have authority to go ahead and make those adjustments. Um, and I just want to make sure you knew um, uh, when we presented to the county council, what was being submitted in the action plan. This correction had already been made. So, what was, you know, what has been submitted to HUD in the action plan is what the council was presented and they approved the submitting. Yes, thank you. Um, this um, it was my mistake of putting all of our home funds um, into the pot for allocation and recommending all of the funds for, for funding. Um, so, we um, we're able to award 250,000. You recommended awarding 250,000 in the home funds to share Aspire, but I had also included our Chodo set aside in the total home funds. So um, that $83,052 um, can only go to a Chodo project, and Share's project is not a Chodo project. And so we reduced their home award by the $83,052. So um, it's showing. 166,948 in home funds for the SHARE TIBRA program. And um, I mentioned to SHARE that I made this mistake and I also mentioned to them that we would ask you to consider using a portion of that home ARP funds, uh, a portion of the 2 million, well, 83,000 of the 2 million um, to award to this project because it does serve homeless um, and then they could have their fully funded program as you originally intended. So that's for your consideration. Uh, Sam, one thing that I would also add on that is that the timelines that we're expecting in terms of receiving those ARP funds um, would be aligned for this project specifically. And just to be clear, Sam, are we asking the Urban County Policy Board to authorize uh, this change right now? If, they, if they're willing to, that'd be great. So, Michael, just to, and Sam, just to be clear, then, so that you're asking the eighty-three thousand to come out of the two million that you just showed us. Correct, and then the eighty-three thousand um, of Chodo funds that were part of our entitlement will just be uh, awarded next year with other Chodo funding. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions for Michael or Samantha on this? I have a question. It sounded like the that funding had some specific criteria. Is, is that criteria any different than what the TBRA requires? If you're, if you're talking about the Chodo set aside criteria, yes, it is uh, different. That is uh, funding that has to go to a project that is. That's, that's uh, not what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, are you are you talking about like the the uh, the two million dollars criteria of the of the the allocation that we're getting with ARP. Um, yes. So the criteria of who it must benefit is aligned with all the tenant based rental assistance programs. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Michael or Samantha? Okay, so if there's an interest in taking action on this item, I would accept a motion. This is Jeff Swanson. I move to approve. It's Ron Onslow. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, any other discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Right, motion passes. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, board. Next slide, please. So, our next agenda item, uh, Councillor Olson, with your permission, we'll uh, move forward with this. Yeah, it's all yours. So, agenda item five is just an update on the community development block grant uh, COVID 2 allocation update. Um, the application to the state. 
uh, was submitted because if, if you recall from our last Urban County Policy Board, we were going to submit, you know, we'd approve the uh, allocation of county funds to the Battleground Healthcare Community Clinic. And Samantha was going to make an application to the state for some additional state CDBG CV allocated funds. Um, we did submit the application April 28th and requested the $426,157. Um, and that uh, breaks down to $404,850 to the Battleground Health Clinic and $21,307 in CDBG admin. Um, so that application is in. Battleground Health, um, uh, Health Clinic did receive a $1 million award from the state legislature. So we are still waiting to hear from the state on their determination of our application. And Sam, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, well, I'll just say this is very exciting because um, they have, uh, we, you awarded them $1 million and then the state awarded them $1 million and the building purchase price was 2.6 million. So they'll only carry a $600,000 uh, mortgage and this 404,000 that's also CDBG funding from that will come through from the state um, will be used for all of their tenant improvements and their moving costs. So um, they're planning to close on the building this Friday and then they are so excited that they are getting ready. They've asked their contractor to get started on tenant improvements on next Monday. <laughs> it's moving right along. That's that's good news. Good news. Any comments or questions on this? I will just say that um, Melita Mosley, Tony Apple here. I will just say that that's very exciting that it's coming along, and I'm very glad for that project. Yeah, and I have a quick follow up. Um, when would you expect to hear on these other two requests? These two four hundred thousand dollar requests. Uh, the 400,000, so the way the state did this application is they um, put all the allocations out ahead of time. Um, for, so every county got a specific amount and then they just said, just tell us how you want to use it. So I know it's not competitive is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we will get this amount and I believe they were, um, the timeline showed that they would review all the applications received in the month of May. And I believe they'll start issuing their contracts in June, um, but they, um, the costs can be incurred before the contract is issued. They'll go back since it's um, coronavirus funding. They can go back in time to um, pay before their contract is in place. Okay, that, yeah, that's even better news. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Chair, yeah, this is Dave uh, Scott. I think um, I think Congresswoman Butler's um, Ten community projects part of the earmark process includes like three hundred something thousand for this. I'm pretty sure that that doesn't mean it's going to get a federal appropriation, but they're on the list of ten from the congresswoman. I just double checked her press release. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> Cheris, did you have a question or comment? I just want to say that I'm extremely excited about this. It's been awesome to be a part of it and finally have them in the bus service area and everything. So it's going to be awesome. So thank you everyone. Yeah, ag agreed. Anyone else? All right, well, good news. Thank you. I don't have thank the agenda you. in front of me, Michael. Where, where are we at? Okay. We are now at uh, agenda item six for the quarterly reports. And with your permission, uh, Councilor Olson, we will start. Go for it. Thank you. Rebecca, do you want to take this one? Good morning again. So these are our quarterly reports for the projects that are um, how they're doing between January and March of 2021. Uh, here we have the public facilities and neighborhood improvement projects. Um, the battleground project is a little bit uh, behind schedule, um, but it, that's due to other work that's going on uh, regarding COVID response. So not surprising. Um, they are um, moving forward solely with their different projects that are going on there. Camus Northwest 12th Avenue project um, that is underway now. Uh, the 
construction began a few weeks ago um, and is on schedule to be completed in, I believe it's by the end of June. Um, Ridgefield Simon Street, uh, that project, the environmental is underway to get that project moving forward. Um, and then the other ones were just awarded funding. So they'll be, um, we'll see more updates for those coming soon. For the social service uh, type program uh, projects, Share House Elevator is still underway. Um, they have been battling to get the final inspection um, for the project so that, that we can actually close it out. So it should be done any day now, but it just it's the project that never ends. Um, the uh, Washougal Social Service Building Repairs, that uh, consultant has been selected for the project, so it is moving forward. Um, and um, the Lifeline Connections project was awarded funding so um, just recently, so that one will be moving forward shortly. Next slide. For our asset and economic development projects, the Hispanic Metropolitan Chamber uh, Technical Assistance for Businesses uh, program is underway. They've been doing virtual workshops uh, monthly, um, and they're starting some new childcare workshops. The Mercy Corps Small Business Development Pro um, Program, their contract was just recently executed, so that program will start soon. Program, uh, Proud Ground for their Home Ownership Assistance Program, uh, they've been marketing. They have five uh, home buyers that applied for the three uh, homes that they would be able to assist with. Uh, so they are still doing the qualification phase of that, um, but those should move along pretty quickly. And then the other projects were just awarded funding, so they'll be moving um, along in a few months. Next slide. Our affordable housing and homelessness uh, projects, uh, the affordable housing side, second step housing, um, they've completed the construction acquisition, um, a construction of the townhomes and the acquisition is about to happen. So it'll be fully under second steps name and then they can uh, get them um, rented out. The uh, VBT Grand Boulevard project, the Grand Pacific Apartments is under construction. I've actually driven by it a couple of times recently, so that you can see a lot of work going on there. The Mercy Corps, or Mercy Peace Health, Peace Health Housing Project um, is still under the legal document phase of the uh, project, but that should be done this summer and then they can get started on construction. And the environmental is underway for the Central Park Place Rehab Project. Our tenant based rental assistance programs are moving forward. Um, they, you know, some of them slowed down a little bit due to COVID, uh, but they have been still assisting households. We're seeing uh, very little turnover for the households. Usually they go through the program and then they graduate and move on. Um, but with COVID and the pandemic, um, their you know, loss of income and things like that, they're staying in the program longer. So we anticipate uh, seeing most of those households continue to stay in the program for a few more months before they're able to uh, get some stability and then graduate from the program and get back to more of a normal program model. Next slide. And then these are the um, COVID specific funded program uh, projects and programs that we awarded funding with last year. Um, so Mercy Corps uh, received funding for grants for small business um, projects. Uh, the Hispanic Chamber is doing additional business technical assistance. Um, and so you can see those pro programs are moving forward. The TIBRA uh, programs are using these funds to help um, with that additional cost of case management for the houses that are households that are staying in the program longer and also um, for paying additional um, wages due to the increased risk of working with these households uh, when many of them still require a little bit of one on one assistance uh, for case management. And then we've already had the uh, um, update on the Bath battleground healthcare clinic. Any questions about the quarterly reports? Doesn't sound like it. <clears throat> Thank you, Rebecca. All right, we'll wrap this up. Michael, you want to finish these last items? Um, well, I'll actually, I'll pass it on to uh, Samantha. Okay. 
Thank you. So our um, timeliness test from HUD is uh, the beginning of May, and this we need to be at 1.5 times our entitlement of funding on hand um, to meet the timeliness test. And I should have looked it up, but I think we had 1.7 uh, times. So we um, we failed our timeliness test, but HUD is is recognizing that a lot of jurisdictions around the country ha also have are having trouble because we're spending all of the CARES Act um, funding and Treasury funding. So there's no, uh, they said, okay, well, we just want to let you know that you did fail the timeliness test and here's some resources for how you can spend the money and please make sure that you are timely by next year's test. So we, um, we recognize all the small cities are um, doing the best that they can. We also um, delayed a lot of things from our end, um, but we will be trying to make sure we can get um, our CDBG funding spent down and our construction projects um, going this summer. So hopefully get caught up by next May. Um, you forgot to say um, that uh, basically, HUD has suspended for all jurisdictions any penalties for failing the timeliness test because, you know, with everything that's going on, most a lot of jurisdictions are not passing timeliness tests. And, and Sam said most of that, but just to make it really, really clear, um, they're still looking and they did notify us that we, you know, we're barely above it. We're at 1.7 instead of 1.5, but all, all penalties are suspended. We do expect that. Uh, penalties are going to come back in uh, future years. Uh, I, you know, probably 2022, but, you know, if not, definitely 2023. Um, and I expect that we will be within our, our uh, timeliness measure before that. Sorry, Sam. Anything else, no. Sam, on timeliness? Thank you. Well, Rebecca just pointed out to remind everybody that we have never not met our timeliness test before. So um, I, We'll we'll be okay. We'll we'll get back there. <laughs> Thank I have you. a quick question. Sorry. What so what would a penalty look like? What, if not, not that we're going to get one, but I'm just curious what what that is. Was that sure? That it's a lot or? of um, technical assistance from HUD. Additional reporting. You have to talk. You have to um, figure out where all of your projects are and what their timelines are going to be, and make um, progress. Um, and like, I think it's quarterly reporting to HUD on how you are going to get caught back up. Um, and then the second year, if you don't meet timeliness again, um, after you've already been working and, and doing the TA, they can reduce your um, entitlement award. So we take okay. it pretty seriously. Thank you. We won't have to worry about that, I'm sure, but I was just curious. Uh, then on the labor monitoring, I just wanted to give an update that HUD asked um, us to do a desk monitoring on our labor compliance, all of the Davis-Bacon reporting and payroll um, documentation. So they selected a couple of files. They selected um, Elahan Place, um, Columbia River Mental Health's rehabilitation of that project, and they selected Washougal Hathaway sidewalks. And so we reviewed those files, we collected all the information, we filled out their form and submitted it, and we got back that um, the program looked good. They had one concern on um, a labor interview that uh, for Elahan Place, but um, we made a note of that, and and uh, otherwise they said, good job. And so we just wanted to let, give you the update that our labor monitoring was completed. I think that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions uh, on those topics? I don't hear any. Um, at this point, I guess we'll take any public comment. Do we have anybody logged in for public comment, Michael? That I can tell. So I, I I don't believe anyone uh, any of the public has called in or logged in. And Sam and Rebecca, can you do you see anything different? Nope, that's I don't see anybody besides our members. Okay, great. Um, then it looks like if necessary, the next uh, UCPB board meeting would be on June fourteenth. And then again, that's if necessary. Um, 
All right, so nothing else, um, Michael, Samantha, Rebecca. Any anything else for the good of the order? I just had a question. This is Ron Onslow. When does the minutes for this come out on the web? We put them after the minutes are approved, so we'll put the March minutes up on the web this week. And then the May minutes, whenever they're approved by the board at the next meeting, will be posted. But if you needed them earlier, we could certainly get you the draft minutes. Do, do you need well, them? Earlier? I couldn't get on to begin with. So then when I finally figured it out with our new iPads, <laughs> uh, I just wanted to be able to get the first half of that or the first few minutes of the meeting that I missed. Oh, sure. I can send that to you. Okay. That would be great. Thank you very much. And just the FYI for the board, the uh, recording of the meeting can will be posted within this week. So the the minutes themselves won't be until they're adopted, but the the recording of this meeting will be posted shortly. How do you get those? They're on the website under the Urban County Policy Board, and we can send you a link to that. Okay, that would be good. I need all the help I can get. No problem. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, even if late, Ron. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else comments? Anything for the good of the order? Okay. All right. Doesn't sound like it. Well, then uh, we will adjourn this meeting and look forward to the next time we get together. Thanks, Michael, Rebecca, Samantha. Thank and you very much. Yeah. We'll see everybody else later. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank Have you a great board. week. Thank Bye, you. Bye, everybody. Enjoy the sunshine. Definitely. Bye.